Good morning chaps, welcome along to the vlog Monday morning. Now, this weekend has been a bit of a pain in the knee for me. Occasionally I suffer from bursitis and I had a flare up this weekend which meant I was totally out of action and I couldn't get done what I wanted to get done. I couldn't get into the unit to turn the HLT on so we can brew today. So that means everything this week's been pushed back a day. So if you're gonna join in this week with me brewing the Centennial Rad Red IPA, then chances are it's gonna be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday will be the brew day. That's not a problem though. It gives us time in these next two or three vlogs to reflect on the recipe, make sure we've got it as red as we want. A lot of people have been throwing suggestions in the hat by saying use special red X malt. Well, I don't have any in stock and uh, my supplies don't do that. That comes from uh, Brees malt, I think, or uh, Castle Maltins or something like that. Basically, Muntins and Brewers Select. Uh, well, whilst I think Bruce like do stock it, I'm not putting an order in for a long time from those guys and to ship 25 kilogram sack from Peterborough to here just ain't worth the toast. So what we're going to do instead is go old school and use what we have in stock. That's the sensible way of doing it I think and uh, it also allows you to experiment with what you've got instead of always having to go out and buy what you need what you think you need you don't necessarily always need it so uh, because it's been a washout this weekend for me I took some homework with me and this box contains the remnants of uh, finishing off all of the control units for the fermenters which we've got out there you know the grey boxes with the STC in so I put together six of those on the weekend or five I think put all the little bits of wire in, hook wide everything up. All we need to do is pop a couple of STC 1000s in one or two of them and they're ready then to be rigged up to the system. Um, I think what did the knee was kneeling inside the tanks and welding. Normally, I'm really careful, all around the workshop I have things like these kneeling pads, there must be 10 of them floating around and usually I'm pretty good, um, but on this occasion I just neglected to chuck one in the tank and kneel on it and I was in a very awkward position uh, and I think that started it and then um, when we put the tanks out there, you know when I jumped on the lids, I don't know if you remember that was Thursday or Friday's vlog, I jumped up and down on the lids and when I would finished it I said to Gemma, oh it feels like all the all this flesh has come away from my bones on my legs because I was jumping down so hard. I think that also compounded the issue. So I really rested this weekend. I didn't do anything apart from drink. <laughs> hey, every cloud. So today we're back in uh, kind of playing catch up, chasing our tail a little bit. Um, I could get the grain and everything out for the brew day, set the HLT up, but that's all right. I can do that later on in the day. We still don't have any steel for the fence ra railings, the iron railings and the gateway. And uh, we still don't have any pulleys for the canopy. So I'm not too happy about that. They've taken quite a long time to arrive. Uh, they were bought off eBay, the, the canopy and the, the steel from DC Iron. Well, they, it was a silhouette and they said it's gonna be a lead time of a week or two. So they're all right. It's the pulleys I'm not happy with. I won't name and shame though, until they arrive. So this morning we're gonna go upstairs. I'm gonna introduce you to uh, the proof of concept beer that's been on the bar and has been excellently received by all the customers. I've been drinking it at home and it is fan dabby dozy. It's bloody gorgeous and uh, we'll go up there and have a little bit of a taster. I know it's a little bit early, it's only 11 o'clock in the morning, but hey, you know what? It's our pub. <laughs> and uh, whilst I'm up there, I have to change a couple of LED lights that Stuart's got in the kitchen. Uh, well, they were fluorescent tubes, so what I want to do is remove the fluorescent tube, remove the ballast, and install LED tube lights, and uh, they will run considerably cheaper if you remove the ballast so that's what we're going to go and do so that's the first job on the list and then we'll come back and probably have a rummage around upstairs getting recipes out and dragging grain out ready for the brew day tomorrow 
and uh, provided that my knee doesn't flare up anymore today we'll get the uh, CIP finished on the tanks with all the carbonates in we'll CIP the boil kettle ready to go and we'll finish off this sticky back foil which is down here to insulate the cones on the other two fermenters that we've got already installed so quite a busy day providing my health stays up to scratch so we've got the first light changed now unfortunately Stuart's measured the bulb size wrong so I've got two five foots but I need one five foot and two six foots so uh, well I'm going to do the modifications on the lamp and get rid of the ballasts in the back straight away so when we pick them up they do these eight foots in tool, uh, six foots in tool station so when we pick them up they can go straight in but just looking at this light fitting up here yeah it's absolutely shocking so look at this look that's it that's how they've just anchored it one screw cracked the housing that screw has just fell out so it's just into the plasterboard and god knows what's holding that side up so yet again you know super tenant to the rescue i'll put it right at no extra cost to the landlord but at least we're gonna we're gonna have peace of mind that the job's done properly because there's been some cowboys in here let me tell you right so we're in uh lights are done in the kitchen and we're going to have um, a little bit of this proof of concept so uh, what we normally do uh, but before we serve any cask ales is pull off what's known as the ullage so you're going to have some beer obviously sat in the line overnight it's the same with your homebrew setup and uh, we want to pull that through and get rid of it where's where's jug out still just on the back, back, back. cheers mate so yeah it's here on uh, Line six, no, line seven, make sure I'm pulling the right beer out. So uh, let's get rid of some mullage. And then before I try the beer, I'll bring the camera around and we'll get a bit of a close up of the old hand pull. Right, there we go. Let's bring that camera around. Right, it is Monday morning after all, so we're just gonna have half a pint. got a bit of that back on this pump which is evident oh look at that beautiful A little bit of running around there for a fancy shot, but I think it's worth it in the end. So, this is the proof of concept. You've all seen the pump clip the past couple of days. Uh, that's what she looks like. So, this started out as an Echo clone, but obviously took a different turn over the past couple of weeks because we couldn't get the right hops, no Vic Secret, no Galaxy. Uh, but I did use the recipe for the base grain that uh, Mark provided for me which I think he got from uh, someone else as well so it's like a third hand recipe but it's very simple it was just like base malt and a touch of cara I think and then all of the beer is made uh, amazing by the addition of the hops and a lot of the hops are late addition anyway you can go back and watch the video let's go and have a smell while we're here so straight away, I'm getting a big hit of the Amarillo, the Simcoe, the Citra, Mosaic for sure. Everything that's in there, we did put Citra in it, right? Either way, that complex backbone of hops is definitely coming through on the nose. And the taste is refreshing, it's got a dry note to it. It's surprisingly smooth on cask, this is the first time I've actually had it on cask on keg which I've been drinking over the weekend 
definitely has a uh, a bit more of a craft ale esque taste to it due to the carbonation, which frankly I prfer. But the the keg version has not come out as clear as this one, which is crystal. So I'm really chuffed with this. I'll definitely be making it again. And I think everyone's gonna be really excited when it finally makes it onto the bar in keg. And that'll be up on the fantastic looking menu behind us, which has been illustrated by Stuart and other members of the team. And it was pretty smart, don't you think? So yeah, if you're in the area, folks, pop in the next week or two and you might just get to try this on keg. Right, I've put a bit of a scruffy old jacket on because it's a bit nippy now. It's been raining this afternoon and I want to go outside and get this canopy finished off. Bloody hell, it's stuck. Um, the pulleys have arrived but I am absolutely gobsmacked at the size. Seven quid. Seven quid that was. Well, let's just have a look, little look. Uh, Barton, fixed eye, five pounds 21 for that little block there, right? These, 14 pounds 32. Look at the size of them. Have you ever seen anything like it? So basically, I've been clipping them off these little back packages here, throwing them away. But pretty much what I can hold in my hand there is a hundred pounds worth of pulleys minus these two still on the table. I kind of did expect them to be a little bit bigger but I guess I should have been paying more attention. There we go, 97 quid. Well they are marine quality and uh, they're stainless steel and they should last many a year. So let's nip next door into the beer garden and put these blocks to use. So that's a double, that's a single, and uh, that one is called, I think, a cheek block. And then they are to work in conjunction with, they're to work in conjunction with these which grab and pinch the line to hold everything in place. So let's go and install it, I guess. I think I've got everything I need now. Oh, I'm not gonna take the camera out with me because it is drizzling a bit. So we'll have a bit of an overview once I've got it all in position. I'm freezing, I need to do some work. Well, as you can probably tell, it's absolutely chucking it down outside. Um, let me just get this white balance sorted. So, uh, it turns out that the pulleys won't work for three canopies. It's too hard to pull and drag all three canopies out in one go. So, I'm going to have to order two more doubles and two more cheek pulleys uh, and one more of the uh, cleat things, whatever they're called so that we can operate them all individually uh, but for the time being I'm going to leave them up and I've put on them just a pull cord so people can pull them out and pull them back at will and then uh, of course because it's raining at least they'll be able to stand in the beer garden and uh, smoke a cigarette and have a bit of shelter so I'll just sit you off the tripod we'll go and have a look at that before we start getting grain out for tomorrow's brew day so this is what I've had to put up with today. Miserable weather. You can see it's just, it's not exactly a torrent, but it's awful to be in. I mean, look at that. This is a drain and there's not even a drain on the bottom. Doesn't make any sense, does it? And then uh, we just peer through here. That's kind of what we've got. So that's the three canopies up. Uh, as you can see, this is the mechanism on the wall for securing it out and uh, yeah, all three of them are just too heavy to wind out in one go. So this one's got the pulley mechanism and these two have just got bits of string dangling off the ends just to pull them in and out. But at least you can stand here in the lovely rain and have a cigarette whilst looking at the canal and remain dry. 
Right, back into the brewery we go. Let's print off some recipes and dig out the grain for tomorrow's brew day. Okay, boys and girls, we've got the recipes here for the next three days. Now, I just want to refer back to the Centennial Red. Um, I've been in and I've made a couple of changes to the recipe, having looked at uh, what contributes colour uh, to the final beer in terms of what grains I've got in stock. And I came across a fantastic article, I'll, I'll leave a link below if I can remember to, uh, about how uh, the perceived colour that you get in a beer from the malts uh, changes depending on where the colour is coming from. For instance, you might use a black malt to add a hue to a beer um, and let's say it comes out at like 45 EBC well you can also get there by just using Crystal 400 but the Crystal 400 will be a different colour as perceived to the eyes as it will to the meter that they use to measure EBC so the EBC in a beer for instance which is the colour is measured by the amount of light that passes through the liquid but if the liquid is being coloured using different types of malt the light can get through but through rally scattering in there in in the beer or in the liquid uh, the same amount of lights getting through but the colour of the lights different so I, this article can explain it a lot better than I can uh, but it inspired me to go back upstairs and have a look at the recipe and remove the black malt from the recipe altogether so we've kept the roasted barley in there I was tempted to change it to chocolate malt but I thought no nah, uh, people won't have bought any chocolate malt if you actually put the order in on the weekend for this stuff to join in with us so I thought well, if we just uh, leave the black malt out, it's not going to be no hard sell to anybody because you can just save that for a bitter or something like that or a, a stout recipe later on. It's not going to be a big upset. So we've tweaked that the uh, roasted barley uh, is the quantities have changed. I can't tell you what they are because I've got the 500 litre version in front of me here. But basically we've got more crystal 400 in there. So don't worry, if you've bought something like 500 grams, I think you'll have enough. Um, but what I've done is I've altered the recipe that I posted on the website. So uh, you can't find it through the website. You can find it through the link on the original Centennial Red Recipe video. And you can find it in the description below me. And uh, you'll be able to get straight there and have a look at it. So if you are joining in with this brew, or you want to make it yourself, then that's where the recipe is. What I intend to do is when I've got some spare time, which ain't going to be ever, um, I'm going to get the website up and running so I can put all the beers onto a beer page uh, on the WordPress page that we've got and then running concurrently or, or parallel, should I say, to, uh, to the WordPress page, I'll also have a Presta Shop page where you'll be able to go on there and download the Beersmith files, so I can't share the Beersmith files on the WordPress platform, but I can on the PrestaShop platform, but I don't have it set up yet. But that'll be something that might come in at the end of the summer, something like that, or be even before if, uh, if I get a chance. And then talking of playing around with all, these, uh, all this technology, uh, I've actually been re-looking at the bottle labels that we made last week too. I'm not happy with them, I'm not finished with them. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to sit back for a couple of weeks on it before we go forwards and I'm going to teach myself how to use a vector graphics program. So I've been using GIMP which is a GNU uh, image manipulation program and all of this works on basically a bitmap principle which means it's pixels. Everything's pixels, it's all dots. Whereas with the vector graphics it uses maths to draw the image for you. Uh, complex maths, all done by the confuser so you don't have to do any of it. But that means when you scale something from the size of a five pence piece right up to something that you might want to stick on the side of a skyscraper, you don't get any graining, you don't get any pixelation. It just all scales naturally because they're using mathematics. So 
I'm going to go ahead and download Inkscape, which is a free open source platform. It's very similar, I believe, to Adobe Illustrator. And uh, I'm going to spend a few hours teaching myself that. I've already spent uh, four or five hours over the weekend watching tutorial videos. So if anyone else knows of any really good tutorials for Inkscape, then uh, leave them in the doodly do for me and uh, I will give you a thumbs up and watch them. Right, I'm going to go in there now, I've waffled long enough, and I'm going to start digging out this grain and then I'm going to go home. That's the truth. All cleaned up, all ready for tomorrow's brew day, so before I go home, I just want to say a big thanks to Dude's Brew. Cheers buddy, he sent me a couple of beers off the back of the fact that he brewed the Bacon Gesture recently. I always enjoy getting beers from Dude's Brew because they're drinkable. <laughs> That's always a big thing for me because sometimes I get some home brews and I just don't have the art to tell them. Let me just straighten this camera just a touch. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've got here. Of course, we've got the Vacant Gesture. Oh, 4.2%. He's out there, he's out. Pale Ale, Pills, didn't need the Pills. Cara Gold, yeah, that'll do. Uh, Challenger Mosaic, 05, yeah. Honestly, this beer, 3.8, it's worth doing it at 3.8. You can drink gallons of it. Right, I look forward to that. Anyway, man, thank you very much. I'm glad you were, like took part in brewing the recipe. You know, I've had loads of people tell me that they've tried the vacant recipe and they've brewed it and it's bob on. I'm pleased that everyone's enjoying it out there. So this is a Pogue Mahone Stout at 4.3%. Pale Ale, Munich, Roasted Barley, Chop Malt, Cara 75, Challenger, East Kent, Goldings and Nottingham Ale, 32 IBUs. I'm not a massive stout drinker, but when I'm in the mood, and if it's a good one, I'm in the mood. And then finally, now this has really got my saliva glands flowing. Warp Speed IPA at 5.4, 38 IBUs, sounds very good. Pale Ale, Munich, Honey Malt, Chinook, Citra, Equinot, 05 yeast. Bingo, bango. I'm gonna go home and try some of these folks. Uh, I hope you've been able to follow me today because I have literally been all over the place with several different jobs, but tomorrow we are brewing the best bitter, Harrison's Best. The following day we'll be brewing the Harrison's Pale, and then on Thursday we'll be doing the Rad Red Centennial IPA. Fingers crossed it comes out red. Remember, everything you need to know is down below if you want to brew along. The video will be out on Friday and it will be a full brew day video. So uh, that means that you can brew it on the weekend if you like. Excellent. We'll see you tomorrow.